Hello, it's Josh from Josh Plays 40K here. We just wanted to apologise for not having much videos up for the last couple of months, uh, just before you get into the next one. Uh, we were going to have a house move uh, in April, which sadly didn't really come about. Uh, and then we've had a couple of family birthdays and we've had to travel around, so haven't really had a lot of opportunity for filming. Uh, but we have been doing things in the background, so we have got a few things filmed. In fact, uh, depending on when you're watching this, the day I'm filming this message, uh, yesterday was in fact the pre-order for 10th edition, uh, which we have been very lucky enough to get our, our hands on a set of Leviathan, which should hopefully be here in time with everyone else's on the 24th. Uh, so really looking forward to that. Uh, but otherwise we've been working on a few other projects, so we've uh, recently started playing Star Wars Legion, uh, which we're really looking forward to. Uh, and we've got some models painted up already, uh, but there's not many others. We will do a couple of tutorials going forward on that. If anyone's interested in any specifics, just let us know in the comments. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I've also been starting uh, Astra Militarum Army. Uh, it's quite a small force at the moment, uh, just the combat patrol that we've managed to get our hands on. Uh, but I've been working on a test model for that. Uh, so just uh, a Regiment Cadian Guardsman. Uh, and then uh, I'm also working on one of the uh, sort of battery guns as well at the moment. Uh, but uh, really quite looking forward to getting uh, my teeth into the Tyranids when they arrive on the 24th. Uh, but without further ado, I'll let you get into this tutorial uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next ones coming forward. Thank you. Hello and welcome to another Josh Plays 40k painting tutorial. Uh, today I will be painting something a little bit different. This is from a game called Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, a miniature, this is Wong, uh, who joins forces obviously with Doctor Strange. Uh, it's a game I started playing uh, just shy of a year ago. Uh, I've been thoroughly enjoying it and uh, thought I would share some tutorials on how to paint up some of these models. Uh, I have already painted quite, quite a few, uh, particularly the Web Warriors, uh, but uh, sort of branching out into the Defenders uh, affiliation at the moment. Uh, and, uh, and yes, my next model is, uh, is Wong here. And uh, I'm going to show you a sort of good, sort of fairly simple way of, uh, of painting it up. Obviously, I've not painted one of these before, so we're hoping it's going to go well. Uh, but without further ado, let's uh, grab some brushes and get started. So the first step we've done is obviously assemble the miniature and I have primed it using Wraithbone spray. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is start blocking in the major colours of the model. Now the major colour uh, for this model in particular is the green outfit that he wears, uh, which is pretty much all of him apart from his hands, face, uh, the sort of ankles that show there, uh, the buttons on the front. Uh, and these sort of sort of straps that he's got round uh, the wrists and the uh, sort of thigh, or not thigh, but uh, sort of ankle areas there. Um, so uh, we can put them together and uh, and see what we'll do. So we're going to start with the green. Uh, for this, we've got uh, striking scorpion green uh, from the contrast range. Now the contrast range I found to be really helpful when painting up these uh, MCP miniatures because. They offer sort of good depth to uh, some of the outfits that the heroes wear uh, and villains, and uh, and uh, it sort of brings out good good tone. And you can use obviously normal any paint really to, to suit these models. Uh, I've seen a few tutorials online which use, uh, say, GW paints. I've seen some that use uh, Army Paint range and and so on. So it just really depends on on how much time you really want to put put into them, uh, whether you're looking at competition based or, or anything like that. Uh, but uh, obviously, do take your time, obviously, uh, and, and paint them up to uh, the standard that you're that you're looking for. Once you've got that green base coat applied all over those uh, overalls, we are going to move on to the uh, yellow cuffs uh, and uh, around the uh, edges of the model, so the uh, around the hands and the uh, legs there. And for these cuffs, we're going to use Nasdreg yellow. So just apply that all over. You're going to want quite a small brush just to make sure you don't get it over the uh, the edges 
onto the green. Uh, obviously, if you do get any on the skin, we can just touch up with Wraith Bone before moving on to applying that color. When you've got that Nasdreg yellow applied, we're going to move on to base coating the uh, buttons on the uniform here. And for this, we're going to use Morfang Brown as a base coat to this. And uh, you'll want a, a, a fine, very fine tip brush to ensure that you don't obviously get anything onto the uh, green if you can help it. Uh, but just take your time and work your way up each of the buttons and uh, then we can move on. Once you've applied that base coat of Morphine Brown, we can move on to putting the base down for the flesh. And for this, we're going to use Dark Oath Flesh. So let's uh, get that on the brush. This is straight from the pot. Uh, you obviously don't need too much on your brush just to uh, obviously get the, the details and the uh, and to sort of tan the skin as we're looking for. So sort of starting here with the hand, just sort of apply a nice sort of even coat over the top. Now that we've got all those base coats applied, we're going to start to apply a few highlights to the model now. And the first thing we're going to look at is this green outfit. And for this, we're going to use a mixture of flash kit yellow and moot green. This is a uh, sort of two to one ratio, two parts flash kit yellow to one part moot green uh, to give us a sort of nice sort of greeny yellow uh, sort of color to uh, to apply over this sort of green overall to give it an, an almost uh, sort of magical effect sort of going underneath and this part we are just simply looking at sort of any of the creases and folds in the uh, in the outfit itself uh, obviously thankfully because of the design of the model they are quite easy to spot once you're happy with those green highlights we're then going to move on to highlighting the cuffs of the model and for this we're going to use screaming skull uh, so you'll want quite a fine tip to the brush here because we are literally just doing uh, an edge highlight so uh, obviously be sure to have a fine point on your brush and then uh, simply just look to catch the raised edges uh, of the uh, the edges of the cuffs and uh, just pick those out just to uh, break break it up a little bit Once you've finished the highlight on the cuffs, we can move on to highlighting the buttons on the model. And for this, we're going to be using Zandri Dust. Uh, and again, this is just straight from the pot. Uh, mix down, dilute a little bit with a bit of water because it can be quite thick. And this is just to pick out sort of the edges of the, of the uh, buttons, just to uh, brighten them up a little bit in comparison to the rest of the model. And then if you're looking at the box art for the miniature, you'll notice that on the this leg here, he has a black and white strip uh, sort of running just, just around the uh, sort of knee area here. Uh, and we're going to add this in. And first of all, we're going to start with the white. And for this, I'm using white scar. So I'm going sort of halfway down the leg, which is sort of where it shows it to be. Uh, and I am going to just sort of simply do a stripe across the leg there, trying to keep it as sort of neat as I can. And then the same using a bad black, put the black strip underneath. Obviously trying to keep it as neat and uh, as uniform as possible in comparison to the white strip we did just above. Next we're going to look at highlighting up the skin. Now this is just going to be a few small highlights using flayed one flesh just to pick out the sort of raised areas of the hands and the face. So we're particularly sort of focusing on anything that's sort of high up, going to catch the light, so the uh, sort of tops of the fingers here for this particular model, uh, and uh, obviously down the sides of this hand here. But then when looking at the face, we're just going to sort of pinpoint areas like the ears here, just sort of looking around the back, uh, sort of around the sort of tips of the nose, just to make that stand out a bit more, and around the sort of base of the cheekbones a little bit as well, just to, just to uh, bring those features out a little bit more. And then as a final highlight to the face, we're going to use a little bit of Rhinox Hide to pick out the eyebrows on the miniature. Now for this, you are going to want a very thin brush, thin tip brush, to uh, pick these details out. So to finish the model off, we're now going to look at the flames in which he is standing and sort of flying over. And for this, we're going to need two paints. First of all, we're going to need Iodin Yellow from the Contrast Range, and then also Blood Angels Red from the Contrast Range. And the way we're going to start this is we're going to take the iodine yellow and apply a base coat of this all over the flames and uh, and then come back and then 
don't let it dry and then we're going to add in the Blood Angels Red prior to it drying. So there we have the Arden Yellow applied. Next up we're going to take a little bit of Blood Angels Red and you won't need a, a lot of this, just a, a little bit on the brush and, uh, and we're going to add it in uh, if you're following the box art, the flames are the reddest towards the, the base, so we are going to just add that in into the wet iron and yellow, just around the base. You don't need to add it add too much, just a little bit sort of here and there across the base. Obviously, don't forget to do both sides, so to try and make it uh, relatively even. But you can sort of add or take away as much of this as you as you wish, depending on what sort of flame effect you're you're looking for. But then before that starts to dry in as well, you're going to go back to iodine yellow. And again, you won't need a tremendous amount of this on your brush either. And just sort of add that in and start to uh, sort of almost dilute the Blood Angels Red into the iodine yellow. So almost sort of we're mixing on the model itself rather than on a palette. So that you can achieve the tone and the blend that you're, that you're looking for. Now this sound sometimes can take a little bit of time, just to obviously get the uh, the mix right that you're looking for. But do take your time, and then it will want a fair bit of time to dry. And it may look a little bit messy when once wet, but when dry, these usually turn out pretty well. Once you've let those flames all dry, we're going to do a final highlight of those using Flash Sketch Yellow as a dry brush. And this is just a very light dry brush over the tops of those flames, just to pick out any raised edges and to uh, just really pick out and make them shine. You can add as much or as little of this as you like, depending on how uh, intense you want the flame effect to be. And there we have the finished model, and Wong is ready to take to the battlefield and uh, hopefully defend the good. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. I will hopefully be doing more MCP videos soon, uh, but uh, if you have any questions at all then just leave them in the comments below and I will come back to you. Thank you.